This is part two of the story of the rich young man who came to Jesus yesterday. And, you know, he said, well, what do I need to do? You know, I, I, I want to be more. And Jesus said, well, leave everything behind and follow me. Go sell it all. Give it all away. Get rid of it. And he will no, no, that's too much. And he walks away. And so we hear part two. The disciples, you know, are looking at Jesus and says, Jesus says, how hard it is for the rich. And, you know, we tend to think that if you have a lot, life is easier, isn't it? I mean, isn't it easier to go out and pay somebody to fix and serve your meal than it is to go out and shop and chop and prepare and do it all yourself? You know? And it was one of those things that back then, people thought that, well, if you were well off, that means that God blesses you. You are favored. You know, you're the blessed one. You're the favored one because see what God has given to you. And Jesus says, no, not true. And Peter says, wait, what, what, no, no, well, hold on a minute, Jesus. You know, excuse me. But I want to point out that I'm not fishing. That's how I earn my living. Um, I thought we would get compensated somehow. You know, is there a 401k that comes with this? Is there some sort of pension that I'll get down the road? You know, <laughs> excuse me, Jesus. And Jesus says, oh, yeah, you'll get a pension in the kingdom of heaven. There you get 12 thrones to sit on. There it'll be wonderful. Oh, that isn't quite what they had in mind. So what's the problem with money? You know, I always say my favorite musical, one of my favorite musicals is Fiddler on the Roof. And I could launch into a whole routine of if I were a rich man, but I won't, I won't do that to you. But, you know, he ends with saying, Lord, would it spoil some vast eternal plan? if I were a wealthy man. And it probably wouldn't spoil any of God's plans. But really, you know, I suspect that I'm not the only one in this room that has bought a lottery ticket along the way. And somehow there is that hope that, you know, I'll win and get those millions of dollars. And I know in my heart of hearts that that wouldn't be good for me. It wouldn't be good at all because I know that the more I have, the more I worry about those things. And the less I have, it's easier. It's easier. You know, all I need is enough to get by. That really is. We had a priest who died a couple of years ago. His name was Bill Hankard. And, and he was a great guy. He really was. I knew him when he was still in the parish, I'm sorry, wrong name, Vincent Howard. I knew him when he was in the parish, and he was, he was really a very good pastor. He really was. And Vince did okay. He was a monsignor. And after he retired, he retired about the age of 70, and he lived for another 30 years. And his goal, as he moved toward 100, was to make sure that he gave away everything he had. And by the time he turned 100, he'd accomplished that. And the last thing he did was give his body to the University of Michigan so that they could use it for whatever they would need it for. His goal was to give away everything. And I remember how inspirational that was when I heard that in his funeral homily. And I thought, you know, isn't that the way it should be? You know, I'm kind of of the opinion that rather than Tevya in Fiddler on the Roof who said, you know, I'd like to be a wealthy man, maybe, maybe it's Dolly who has the better philosophy. You know, hello, Dolly. You know, she had the philosophy that money was like manure. You had to spread it around to make things grow. 
And somehow, you know, that is what the Lord is saying too. If we have it, it's not for us, but it is to be shared. It opens for us the possibility of giving to others in a way that will make this world a better place, no matter what it is, whether it's cash or gifts or talents or abilities, that somehow we use those for the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus is talking about. We hear in that first reading the story in the book of Judges about Gideon, who, you know, says, why are you coming to me? You know, our tribe is not one of the big ones. It's a small one. And in that tribe, I am among the least important. Why would God call me to do this? And the reason was simply because the other ones who were stronger, who were better, we're going to rely on their own power. But Gideon only had God. Hmm. Maybe the lesson is that. The problem with having a lot is that we tend to rely on that instead of on God. And Jesus calls us to rely on God. And those who do will have an abundance in this world, really, and in the world to come. Not necessarily of the things but of what really matters in life. And that, my sisters and brothers, is the most important. Because in the end, it's not what we have that will save us. It's how much we've given away. 